We just completed a successful two-day passage from Panama City, and now we find ourselves approaching the island of Cuiva, which is rumored to have some of the best diving in Panama. From 1919 to 2004, Cuiva was a penal colony and home to some of Panama's most dangerous criminals. After the closure of the prison, the entire island and surrounding waters were transferred to the National Park System of Panama. So effectively, the entire area has been protected from commercial fishing and exploitation for over a century. One of the reasons for the spectacular diving and biodiversity here. The only problem is the park fees for boats are incredibly high. In fact, it could turn out to be the most expensive place in the entire world we've ever been charged to drop our hook. We've just arrived here at Isla Cuiba and uh, it's an interesting island. It's actually a Panama like federal park. Uh, and one of the things we heard about it is you have to pay a fee to anchor here. And we read uh, that the fees are actually quite expensive. So for boats of 50 feet or above, we heard that it's supposed to be like $180 per night to anchor and then $20 per person. So for us, that would be like 220 bucks a night, which is probably the most expensive place we'd ever anchored in the entire world, I think. And I also heard that if you go in with them and plead your case and say like, hey, we're not like a dive charter or a commercial vessel, we're just a sailboat with a few people on it, sometimes you can kind of negotiate it down to a more fair price. So. Yeah. Uh, Miss, Miss Amigos, the park rangers Hi. here. Miss nice to meet you, This is Edgar. Uh, Mr. Gusto. Gracias. Flore. Brian. Samuel. <laughs> Jonathan. Nice to meet you guys. Nice to meet you. Okay. Nice. So we're good for four days. Oh, nice. Awesome. Amazing. The guys are super nice, of course. We chatted with them. One dude spoke a little bit of English. Uh, I got him down to like the lower under 50 foot price and uh, so like 60 bucks a night. So it's a huge difference. I mean, it's still a lot to anchor, but it should be a pretty special spot. And hopefully like, be I think because it's expensive, not a lot of people come here. And yeah. so I think that it's it's pretty natural and it's preserved and it, it I look forward to seeing if it's worth it. Spotted eagle, Ray. Two days ago, we were in Panama City. Now we're in the middle of nowhere, and I love it. Yeah. I love this kind of exploring. We found our spot for the night. Yeah gonna be this lovely bay. It's got some pretty extreme jungle vibes going on. Good jungle vibes. The only thing I'm not getting are extreme beach vibes. Oh yeah. And Nugs needs a good beach vibe or she goes insane. Yeah. We'll, so we'll find see one. how that goes. A few hundred dollars lighter, our first hurdle to diving was cleared. Now, on our own without a dedicated guide, our next challenge was to actually find a few good underwater spots to explore. Armed with our charts and a few vague descriptions we read online, we set off in search of a place to breathe underwater. As if finding a good spot wasn't challenging enough, we also had to deal with the fact that this area is mostly drift dives and current, so we'd need to dive in teams, and also find a way to keep Sierra entertained while the adults were doing their boring stuff. Thinking about to just anchor in front of the rock here? I think this is the right place. I actually have no idea. I think it'll be cool out here. Yeah, we got we got the, the so charts that, here, that the charts that here. Point way up there. Charts on the phone and notes from friends and notes from the internet, and we're trying to figure out where the heck this dive site is. 
<laughs> this is definitely the, one of the hardest parts of trying to dive on your own. Okay, so we just arrived at our first dive site. A little bit nervous. We haven't been diving in so long, but I'm really stoked too. It's gonna be awesome. And we've read so much about this, you know, this area and this island and how much cool stuff that you can see. I'm not entirely sure about this specific dive site. Uh, we didn't have that much information about it. Just kind of like a little blurb and a random dot on a map but yeah it's quite a few things to like consider uh and you know with all the gear and i think also there's a lot of current here uh we're not sh entirely sure about where the current is running right now or how it feels when we're down there or if it's even any fish down there uh we're also juggling sierra's nap times <laughs> so uh because we're only three people and sierra it means that like somebody always has to be with her uh we're trying to like now anchor close to this dive site so brian can be on the boat when sierra is sleeping and me and jordan like jordan is gonna have like one of those safety sausages on a reel so brian can kind of like follow us and make sure that we don't get like swept away if there is a lot of current. Being back underwater felt absolutely amazing. I really enjoy the relaxation that diving brings to me. It totally calms my mind and being able to do it in such a beautiful place all on our own only made it that much better. The visibility was amazing and so far the fish life did not disappoint. better from here too like we saw a shark I saw a turtle from afar so many different fish we saw like lobster uh, eel and a lobster together in one home what eel and lobster lovers I know well, I'm yeah. glad you guys had a good time the sea life here you can't even compare it to the thumbs like the fish are not scared like they're all just out like the groupers I mean of course if you get close to it it would be like oh yeah. But like they're just chilling. All the fish is Yeah, when, we, when we came out like sort of into the sand and that and that one school yeah. was just circling us forever. Yeah, it's like this That's is cool. how it should be, you know? Turn that on. What a day, huh? Yeah. What a day. And we're gonna go a little dingy keys. Yeah. Slow dingy keys. Yeah, enjoy this amazing sunset. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna thread what do they call it? Thread the needle? Thread the needle. We're gonna thread the needle. Sierra, we're gonna thread the needle. Yay! Whoa. So cool. Here comes a set. Oh. oh, we just got a little bit yes. smashed. Yeah, it was my fault, too. <laughs> it was a big set. Now Cass is upset at me looking at it. So frustrating. <laughs> Naughty Brian. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> you just got told. At least we're in paradise. <laughs> sure. What's our plan for the day? Uh, we are going to go uh, just around the corner and go to two different islands. One's called uh, Cocos, and the other is called Ranchera. And we're just going to dive. Gonna get our dive on today. Sweet. But it's pretty pretty sweaty up in here, so we can it go is, for a quick dip. It's hot. We're gonna go for a little morning cool down. Get 
Here comes the baby! <laughs> She's just hanging there. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the heat in Central America is no joke, and we found ourselves spending more and more time in the water cooling off. After our first successful dive, we wasted no time in moving to our next spot to continue our underwater exploration. What an incredible spot this is. I feel like it's just so wild and I mean the dive we did yesterday was phenomenal. I haven't seen that good diving in I don't know how long, like ages. It feels really good. It feels good to be through the Panama Canal. It feels good to like be out and about in the islands again and just have some time to you know, decompress the big city. I feel like it was a lot, you know, like this is the kind of cruising that I love. Like it was really cool to go through the Panama Canal, but to just be out here and to just hear the noises of the forest and the monkeys and like be able to swim in the water in the morning. And yeah, it's, uh, it's very cool and it's the cruising that I love, so. <laughs> this place looks cool. So beautiful here. Yeah, just over there when we were going through like the chart showed uh, should have been eight meters and it got down to like two meters, one meter, like under us. I was like, oh. So you can see here, we basically anchored on top of an island and then drove through two islands. And then there's one island that is on the chart but doesn't actually exist, which I still can't figure out. I mean, such a good thing that you don't try to arrive at night or something and you're using only the charts. I mean, I guess it would show up on radar, but still, still you would just crash literally into islands it all makes, over the place. It makes trying to find our dive sites a challenge. Yeah. This is so beautiful. Amazing. I'm like super stoked right now. Are we going to go diving today again? It's like a really special spot. This is, this is a unique place for sure. The wildness of it just enhances everything. Yeah. Come on, buddy. Come on. This place is pretty spectacular. Like, we first came in and I didn't really realize but the tide was high and you couldn't see any beaches and I was like oh no <laughs> no what are beaches we gonna do with the nugs <laughs> I know. no beaches for Sierra but then the tide came down and all of these incredible white sand beaches just appeared it's pretty nuts yeah the tides are incredibly different on this on the Pacific side of Panama yeah like when we we're in San Blas and like the Caribbean side of Panama we were seeing tides of a third Nothing. of a meter about a foot yeah and here it's about three meters almost 10 feet so you know the tides are like 10 times as big the other thing that's interesting that comes along with tides are currents so oh, you know yeah. when, when that amount of water moves it's a massive volume of water uh, and all that moving water between islands and like cuts creates huge currents yeah it's been a lot of current i guess that's why the diving is so good here too right yeah and that's something we're gonna have to figure out like in our dives because you can literally just get blown off the dive site and uh yeah. into the middle of nowhere so i think we're gonna have to be doing team dives yeah are you guys ready yeah pretty crazy to dive from a beach i haven't done that from a beach. i know there is some current so we're gonna dive with our service marker and Kaz is gonna keep an eye on us and we have a plan for what time we should be back by and if we not should come back. Drift dives are my favorite. In this case, the current is blasting at about three knots, which means all you need to do is kick back and watch the show. 
kicking is totally optional here. Currents also bring in nutrient-rich waters, which creates a feeding ground for small fish, which means that larger fish and sharks are also drawn in, hopefully snack attacking on a straggler as well. After only a few minutes of diving, we'd been blown around the entire island, ending on the complete other side. Got a little workout, huh? Yeah. yeah. Get legs. Our last morning in Cuiba brought a torrential downpour, but that wouldn't matter to us one bit underwater, so we decided to go for it. Hola! Really cool spot. Sounds good. Ooh, I hear a chipper, crying baby, chipper, tiny baby inside. How's it been like navigating diving with having a baby? A challenge. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave it at that. Okay, hey. sailing around is difficult, doing it on your own is difficult, scuba diving is difficult, and doing that off of a boat is even worse, and then if you add a baby into the mix, it's like, difficulty level X factor. So, yeah, but we've been uh, making it work. Yeah, we're making it work, so uh, we're going to get all the gear in the boat, we're going to get baby provisions in the boat, snacks, water, probably entertainment device, and then we'll zoom out to the rock and then I'll just sit with her in the dinghy for like 40 minutes. What an amazing spot, Cuiba. It's been a fantastic four days and the diving has been absolutely incredible. It's been quite a lot to like juggle between all the <laughs> gear and Sierra snaps and everything. I feel quite exhausted, but it's been, yeah, it's been way worth it and spending, you know, we were kind of concerned a little bit in the beginning if it was worth the money and all of that, but I think yes, it was definitely worth the money and especially since we've been able to do so much diving and we haven't seen this good underwater life in a long time. So yeah, super stoked about this spot, but it's time to head out tomorrow and yeah, say goodbye to Cuiba. I really loved it. What a spot. And thank you so much also for watching to the end of the video. That's awesome. Hope you really enjoyed it. And yeah, here comes some up next. Up next on Delos, we discover some more hidden gems on the stunning Pacific coast of Panama. Give Maggie a sexy new facelift. And settle back into cruiser life in style with a proper beach cookup.
Oh, jeez. <laughs> you ran it right in the face. Ah, now my sunglasses are all wet. Look at you. Ah. <laughs> so, yeah, she's just chasing crabs. And we're just watching the sausage. <laughs> watching the sausage, that sounds weird. What? That's all I get? <laughs> it's like a crab. That's all I get? <laughs> she's putting you. She's, Am I on the naughty list? she's putting you on a diet. Oh, thank you. Two, two oh, pieces. Wow. <laughs> another fra fraction. Go. <laughs> you ready? I'm ready. <laughs> Did you start? No, I didn't. Yeah. I thought it was you. <laughs> Has a part in. No. What a babe. Yachting! <laughs> living for the weekend, living for the weekend, yeah! Yeah! That's your, that's your... Just trying to set the anchor here. Bride over there. Yeah, I know. She's a, she's a winner, Sierra's she's a keeper. Sierra's mom over there. <laughs> <laughs>